Hey, what is up guys? Wrestling Reviews 94 back again with another video. And today I will be reviewing this pay-per-view right here, TNA Victory Road 2004. Um, this is uh, one of the three DVDs that came in the TNA uh, Epics Pack, I believe that's what it's called. Along with um, Turning Point and I believe Lockdown. Maybe wrong on that. But yeah, so I, I, I plan on reviewing the other two um, in the near, near future, but, um, you know, this is two discs, I don't even know why, um, you know, they could have easily fit this on one disc, I guess they just wanted to have more value for it since it's two discs, so you have to pay more for it, um, so I'm just going to run down some of these matches, um, and just review them, basically, star ratings, everything is in the, um, description box down below. Alright, so we start off the night with the 20-man X-Gauntlet. Now, I thought this was a great, 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 great opener. And a great match as well. You know, it's basically one big spot fest, but you really see the talent. Um, and it really resembled how uh, awesome the X-Division was back, you know, uh, in the early stages. Nowadays, you know, it's not even close to what it used to be, but, um, the talent you had in here was unbelievable, um, you had, uh, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, um, many, many more you had, actually, you, you had, even had Matt Seidel, also known as Evan Bourne, um, you had La Park, also known as La Parker from, uh, WCW, I mean, you had a lot, a lot of star power in here, um, but yeah, the, I, I believe, what's his name, Victor Garza or something like that? I don't know. Some scrub I've never even heard of won the gauntlet. But it was, it, what a gauntlet it was. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, four and a half stars. That was the match of the night. Without a doubt. I mean, it was just phenomenal. The next match we had was the Naturals. Kid Cash in Dallas versus Ron Killings, Johnny B. Bad, Eric Watts, and uh, Pat Kenny. Now, Dallas, a.k.a., uh, what's his name, Lance Hoyt, a.k.a. Vance Archer, um, he had a lot of nicknames, but, um, and also Johnny Bibad, uh, is Mark Merrow, and I believe this is one of the first matches he had in TNA, um, I believe he ha he was in the short-lived XWF, uh, company before he went to TNA, and then he would soon retire, but this match was total trash. I mean, it was only about... I won't say total trash. It was a waste of time. That's that's better to describe it. Um, one and a quarter star, I believe, Killings team won this match. But, yeah, it, it was just stupid. It, it didn't need to be on this card. And um, th the one thing that really hurt this pay-per-view was the time management. Um, this got about four or five minutes. Fine. But the thing is, guys, I mean, some of these matches didn't need to be on here. Like the next match, which was Mascarita Sagrada versus Piratita Morgan, I believe his name was. And it was it was a, uh, a midget Lucha Libre match. I mean, really, does that need to be on the card? And that got nearly three minutes. You could have easily done away with that, gave it um, to any of these matches at all. But yeah, it was just total crap time management. That really, really killed this pay-per-view for me. But, yeah, that, that midget match was a total friggin' disgrace. That was a dud. It, it was horrible. Um, the next match uh, was the uh, World Tag, NWA World Tag Team Championship match between uh, Team Canada and uh, three live crew, BG James and Conan. Now, this match was okay. I wish it would have got more time. I, I think it only got around six minutes or so, but you know what, that's unacceptable, I mean, it's a tag team championship match, it's not like, uh, some random tag team match or another match, you know, it's for a title, it should have got more time, in my opinion, but for what it was, it was, it was good, um, three live crew became the new tag team champions, uh, two stars, it, it, it was a good match, I wish it got more time, though, and then we had a random, um, Piper segment, which is basically uh, Piper's Pit, but it was called In the Pit with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Now, um, I don't know why this was on here. 
and uh, it was supposed to be a surprise guest. It turned out to be Jimmy Snuka. Uh, Piper wanted to reconcile with Snuka for you know the whole coconut incident, um, and Snuka wouldn't do it. So here comes Kid Cash, Kid friggin' Cash, and starts calling out these legends. I mean, okay, it, I mean earlier in the night he did call himself like one of the greatest. So I guess you, it's understandable, but come on, it's friggin' Kid Cash. I mean, really, I mean it was total trash. And then um, a couple uh, guys came out, attacked um, Piper and uh, Snuka, and then Kid Cash hit who? Who? I don't know. He he hit uh with Sanjay Dutt with the coconut. I mean, it was totally random. This was a bad segment overall. It was just a waste of time. Trinity versus Jacqueline. Now, Jacqueline was the mystery opponent that was built up. This was, once again, a waste of time. It went about two and a half minutes or so, um, and Trinity went over. I mean, you would think that Jacqueline would because, you know, it was her TNA debut, but I, I don't know, guys. The, the booking didn't make any sense there. Monsters Ball Match. Um, and that was a half a star. Monsters Ball match. Abyss versus Raven versus Monty Brown. I liked how this was built up. Um, basically, they had these guys um, locked in some kind of uh, psychiatric room, you know, with the padded walls and whatnot. No food, no water for 24 hours, so it made them seem like a monster when they actually wrestled. Um, this was a... a above average match for the time it was given it was it got eight nine minutes you know i would have loved to see the monsters ball get at least 13 i mean come on it's a monsters ball match the spots could have been a little bit better i mean you, you know you had your typical um abyss tack spot but you know it, that was about it and then also the ending where monty brown pounced on raven through the table and monty brown got the win but still, the, the the spots were very, very um, short. Short. It came up short, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. But the match, two and a half stars. It, it was, it was, uh, it was good. But I, I really, really wish that it got more time. X Division Championship match: P. D. Williams versus A. J. Styles. P. D. Williams was the champion. If P. D. Williams lost this match, then uh, Scott Demore would leave TNA, and that wouldn't happen. P. D. Williams did retain against Styles. This match didn't get much time, but it was awesome. I really had a lot of fun watching it. Three and a quarter star. Um, it would have been unbelievable if it had gotten at least ten minutes. I think it only got like six or seven. But, yeah, I mean, I was very, very impressed with that match. Elimination last team standing match between Triple X versus uh, America's Most Wanted. This match was unbelievably disappointing. Now, I really like the, the stipulation, but the thing is, guys, I, I mean, it, it was just very um, off-tempo. I mean, there was botches. At, at one point when, um, who, who was on AMW? I think it was, it wasn't Storm, but whatever, I don't, I don't remember. But one of, the, one of the guys on AMW eliminated Christopher Daniels. And then he would roll out to the outside and start talking about the finish with uh, Elix Skipper. I mean, you can't have that happen. It really hurt this match. This match was incredibly disappointing. It even got, like, 11 minutes. Very disappointing. Two and a quarter star. I mean, it was... I, I would go as far as to say that was the most disappointing match of the night. And then we had the main event ladder match for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Jeff Jarrett, uh, the defending champion versus Jeff Hardy... Now, okay, they, throughout the night, they built up Scott Hall being on Jeff Jarrett's side, Kevin Nash being on Jeff Hardy's side. Uh, the match itself was okay. I mean, the spots weren't that great. Um, at one point, Jeff Hardy botched a powerbomb twice, really hurt the match. But the, the ending was stupid. I mean, Scott Hall, uh, Kevin Nash came down, gave a guitar to Scott Hall. They bashed Jeff Hardy over the head with it. And Jeff Jarrett went up to the top, got the title. The thing that pissed me off the most about this was throughout the night they promoted this big name um, coming to TNA. Uh, in fact, he was outside in a limo, and Shane Douglas kept, you know, wanting to figure out who this guy was. Well, after the match, you know, um, Scott Hall and um, 
Kevin Nash were beating up on some guys that came down to the ring, including AJ Styles. And then here comes the the mystery man. It's Randy Macho Man Savage. Okay, that's great. But the show ended with Randy trying to get in the ring and security stopping him. And then the pay-per-view went off the air. Are you kidding me? Like, come on. That was supposed to be built up for this pay-per-view. Nothing happened. I would have loved to see him get in the ring, beat up Nash, beat up Paul. That didn't happen. That really hurt this. Uh, the, this pay-per-view. I thought it was a very poor ending. Three and a half stars, though, for the match. Overall, the pay-per-view, not so good. Six out of ten. Um, I really don't recommend this pay-per-view. I, I think it was total garbage, really. It was TNA's first three-hour event, so whatever. But, you yeah, guys, that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching. Give me your thoughts on this pay-per-view if you've seen it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later.